In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use images in your look and feel functions. So on my desktop, I have this project folder, draw image demo. Inside here, it's just a normal project. In the images folder, I have this image of a switch or a button with two positions, two different images. And it's a really tiny low resolution image, but that's okay for our purposes. So we've got the off image and the on image and we are going to apply this to a button using look and feel so that when the button's off it shows the off image, when the button's on it shows the on image. And in your own projects you could extend this and have other button states for when the mouse is hovering over the button and when the button's, um, when the mouse is pressed and things like that. But to keep it simple we're just going to do two button states. Okay the first thing we need to do is add a button to our UI. So let's draw a button and we'll set the size of this so our image is 65 by 60, but 60 is the total height and we have two frames. So we'll set our button to have a width of 65 and a height of 30. Now that's actually pretty tiny there, so we'll just zoom in on that. Okay, and then we need a reference to our button, so we'll right click on it here in the component list, select create script variable definition, and then we'll paste that into our script. And now we've got a reference to that button, put a little comment there. We're also going to need a look and feel object. In the past I've shown how to use global look and feel. In this video we're going to be using the local look and feel, which allows us to apply look and feel to individual components. Okay, so we're going to create a const. We're going to call it button laf for look and feel. That's going to be equal to content dot create local look and feel. So now we have a look and feel object called button laf. I'll hit F5 on that. Now we need to load our image into our look and feel function. So let's get the name of this image. So it's black underscore on underscore off dot PNG. So I'm just going to copy that name so I don't have to remember it. If you saw my previous video about loading an image into a panel, this is pretty much exactly the same. So it's button laf dot load image. And it takes two parameters. The first parameter is the path to the image. And because this is in our project folders images folder, we're going to use the project folder wildcard. So that's curly brace, project underscore folder, closed curly brace. And then we put the name of the image, which I copied. So that's black underscore on underscore off dot PNG. And if this was in a subfolder, you'd put the subfolder name there with the forward slash. And the second parameter it takes is called the pretty name and it's basically an ID that we can use to refer to this image in our look and feel function. So I'm just going to call this button, but you'd probably want to give this a more descriptive name in a real project. So we'll hit F5 there. Now we need to assign our look and feel object, our button LAF, to our button. So we do that with button1.set local look and feel. And in the parentheses, we pass in our LAF object, button LAF, and we can hit F5 there. Now, so far, nothing's changed. Now we're going to register a function in our button LAF. So this is a bit like assigning a paint routine. So we'll do this up here because it's part of the look and feel. It's not directly part of the button. So right, button LAF dot register function. And I'm using the autocomplete here and we're looking for the function called draw toggle button. And there's tons of look and feel functions for you to explore. The autocomplete is really helpful for this. So we want draw toggle button, be around here somewhere, there it is. So now that we've assigned this function, now that we've registered this function, as soon as I hit F5, our button is going to disappear because Heise is now expecting us to decide how it looks. So that's so it's still actually there, but it's just invisible. So this is also a good way of making invisible controls if you want to hide a control for some reason and you don't want to use an empty PNG, you can use an empty look and feel function. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get the area of our button into a variable. So we'll create a variable called a and that's going to be equal to obj.area. If this obj thing is unfamiliar to you, I suggest you go and watch my video all about look and feel. I'll leave a link to that in the video description or you can press the i icon in the top right of this video to go view that. So that gives us the XY width and height of our button. And now we're going to write g.drawImage. 
And the image name is the little ID, the pretty name ID that we assigned. So that's just button. The area is going to be A because we want to use the whole area of the button. And the offset is going to be zero for the X. And for now it's going to be zero for the Y. And if we hit F5, there's our button. So when I'm clicking this button now, the button's value is changing, but we're not seeing the image change. Let me show you that the button's value is changing. We can see it here in the script watch table. So in the script watch table, we can see the button's value is zero. If I click the button, it changes to one. If I click it again, it changes to zero. So we can see the button's value is being changed when I'm clicking the button. So now what we need to do is use the button's value to offset the Y axis. And we know that each frame of the image is 30 pixels. And we know that because our image has a height of 60 pixels and there are two frames. So therefore each frame, assuming they're evenly spaced, which they should be, is 30 pixels. So if we go back to our little draw image function here, for the Y offset, we can do 30 multiplied by obj.value. So that's the value of the button. So if the button's value is zero, then 30 multiplied by zero is zero. So we'll see the off image. And if the button's value is one, 30 multiplied by one is 30. We'll see, hopefully, the offset image, which should show the on button state. So we'll hit F5 on that and instantly you can see it change because the button's value was one. If I click the button again, it goes off. Click it again, it's on. So really nice, simple way to draw an image within your look and feel function. Let me show you what happens if we resize the button, but keep the frames. There we go. We don't want to show the other frame. If we make it too tall, it'll show both frames. So we just want to sort of scale it up. So let's see what happens now. We'll click it again. There we go. Same thing, but it's scaled up. We can zoom out a bit now if we want. Um, obviously, this is a low res image, so we don't want to um, make it too large. OK, I hope you found this useful. There's all kinds of applications for this. You can use it for knobs and sliders and buttons and maybe even combo boxes. So have fun with it. Go and play with it. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.